Hello friends, welcome back to Figure Study and by extension Nemesis September as we take a look at this absolutely monstrous thing, which is the Aoyi, A-O-Y-I, I don't know how you pronounce that, the whatever mech LS-13B Dark Knight. It is an oversized and quite re-engineered knockoff of Studio Series Optimus Prime, but in Nemesis Prime colors, specifically Studio Series 38 Prime. And I... Okay, so I love this thing. I absolutely love this thing. Just right off the bat, saying it, I love this. But I went through some nonsense to get this. Not just this. Long story short, I had two versions of the original LS-13, which was regular Optimus Prime colors. One of them was misassembled and I couldn't get it to transform properly because they installed two right shoulder ratchets instead of a left and a right. And then I went through this whole rigmarole with the site that I bought it from to try and get a replacement, and they never ended up giving me the replacement, and then they said they were going to give me a refund, and it's been over a month and they haven't given me a refund, and I contacted them asking about it again, and it's been over a week and I haven't heard back yet, so they basically ghosted me. So that's kind of annoying. I ended up getting a second version of LS-13, and that one also had a couple of issues, so I basically ended up taking them both apart and swapping out different parts to kind of make my preferred version of LS-13. And then I sold off the Junker because it was junk. Then this comes along, so I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna sell off my regular LS-13. First one of these I ordered back in July got lost in the mail after arriving in the US after it only took about a week, a week and a half to get to the US, got lost in the mail for over a month and when I contacted the different site that I bought that from, they were very nice. I got the, I ordered this from Show Z. Not their fault that it got lost. I contacted them and they looked into it and said that the shipping company said that it's lost. So they sent me a replacement. And this is the replacement one that they sent me. So it took two months to get this when I pre-ordered it in early July, but I finally have this and I'm happy I finally have this. It's just a shame that I had to go through so much nonsense to get it, but yeah, um, this is a fantastic toy. It's huge, but it's fantastic. The detailing is great, but before I get into that, I wanna say you do have options for how you display the truck mode. Like right here, I've got the kind of earth mode thing going with the regular silver rim tires, but turning it around, I've got the Cybertronian tire rims installed. So you've got options, and that's cool. I don't care for these, so I don't use them, but you do have options. I just have them put in on this side so you can kind of see this is what it looks like. Unfortunately, you cannot put those on to these wheels because of the way that the rims are shaped. They kind of stick out more, whereas these ones, they go in a bit more. So it doesn't really work to have them on the front, so I kind of feel like, what's the point? It just doesn't look right. I know it's primarily for the robot mode, but I just prefer not to bother with them. Fortunately, they're optional and they're really easy to take off. You just take a spudger or a screwdriver or whatever and just wedge that into this little gap here and they pop right off. And that's how those look. And they just wedge into place and you get four of these. But as I said, I prefer the more earth mode look because that way it's not like this weird two Cybertronian hubcaps and then a regular earth mode hubcap. But yeah, the detailing on this thing is great. I love the color scheme, like that's really nice, shiny black with the very bright white stripes and that silver accents that are really, really nice. And of course, the kind of blood red that they got for the windows and kind of a metallic-y blood red for the lights here and the side windows here. And this does that thing where it doesn't quite match up and that's kind of a shame. And that's one thing that I liked about the original uh, LS-13 where it was just kind of like a matte black plastic going all the way through, so it looked much more, like it matched better. I kind of wish that they had painted these windows the same metallic red as, you know, what they did there instead of using translucent plastic, but oh well. It still looks good, it's just I would have liked that to match up better. And another detail that I think is really cool is that they've got these little lights along the top that you can tuck, uh, but you can tuck these away if you want. These, I don't think it would work to tuck them away because they don't really sit flush in there. But yeah, I kind of like how you got these little details that pop out and then in robot mode, they disappear completely. 
We've got little side mirrors, lots of little rivet details put in there, and then along the back, this nice kind of metallic-y looking plate that covers up a little bit of the robot stuff that you might see back there. I'm gonna pop this out of place so you can see that's what that looks like. But this is effectively the Studio Series 38 Prime mold, just with a ton of changes and also made much larger. One change that I really like is the rifle ends up being incorporated into the back of the truck to kind of fill this in better, which is really nice. It like helps to hold things in very securely and also makes it not look as gappy. Ugh, this thing's big. <laughs> I guess since I keep going on about how big it is, let's uh, set him off to the side here and bring in some size comparisons. Here he is with the standard deluxe squad, and yeah, um... Yeah. Here he is with another Studio Series Nemesis Prime knockoff, which is, I believe this was also Kaoyu Mech, but uh, yeah. This is, this is the same, like, aside from the color scheme, this is the same exact size as Studio Series 38 Optimus Prime, so you can see just how much of an upscaling went on here. And here he is with the duck tank. Okay, let's do this. Now, this is definitely more involved than the standard Studio Series transformation by a lot. One thing that I want to note, and you'll see it in the transformation video, but I want to be sure and be clear about this. There are these panels that are kind of up along here on the side of the cab, just right on the side. I'm touching the panels right now. These panels are meant to rotate so that instead of facing this way, they're upside down and facing this way, and then fold back along the shoulder. I've found, and also by looking on TFW, I've seen people confirm this, that they're designed to swing down. Not up, but down. If you swing up, there's a good chance you're going to put too much tension on the connection here and snap this panel off. Which isn't the end of the world, because you can still kind of fix things in place in robot mode so they're not going to fall off or anything like that, but essentially it's designed so that you swing it down rather than up. So if you ever get this figure, or LS-13, or anything like that, don't try to swing it up, swing it down. Okay? Okay.
And at long last, here we have LS13B Dark Knight. As I said, it's a much more involved transformation than the Studio Series figure. Also, because of the different engineering and because this thing is so large, that makes it even more difficult because you kind of have to balance them on a table for some of it or possibly on a clap. It's not a bad transformation at all. It's actually quite clever. It's just much more involved than the standard transformation. But this looks absolutely incredible. <laughs> I mean, LS13 on its own looked really cool, but in the Nemesis color scheme, forget about it. This is just amazing. Proportions are pretty nice. The pec section is definitely a bit chunky, but I'm okay with it. The torso definitely looks a little bit more streamlined than the standard Studio Series 38 Prime. And compared to some of the other Bumblebee movie primes that are out there, in particular, I'm thinking of the Wei Zhang version. That one, I'm not super fond of the proportions because the torso kind of looks like a potato. More than anything, I think it's just it's got really weedy looking forearms. But this is absolutely my speed. It's really well constructed. There are a couple of different things that I'm kind of like, eh, like rotating those panels around. There's no really good way to do it. You saw that I was kind of like having to rotate the arms around and inward just to give myself enough clearance to swing those panels around. And it's not great, but it's doable. I'm hoping that that's not going to, because there's still a little bit of flex involved doing it like that. I'm hoping that's not going to break those. I may end up opening up the uh, shoulder and loosening the screw like everyone recommends just as a precaution. But again, swinging it down versus swinging it up works so much better. Fortunately, the tolerances on this one are a lot better than the tolerances on either of the original LS13s that I got. Both of the ones I had before had really loose knees. This guy's knees seem a lot better. His ankles are also nicer. Like, they're still snug when rotating them around and stuff, and like the sideways tilt is a little bit tight, but not like alarmingly tight like it was on the original versions that I had. Those I had to like open up the feet entirely in order to get some shock oil in there. These are much better toleranced. The forward and backward motion on the ankle is a little bit loose for my liking, but there's not enough of it to really cause a problem. He does wiggle, but he's not falling. You gotta kind of bump him pretty hard to get him to fall over. And you can see there's... this is uh, not great, because the way that these are constructed, there's basically just this armature. It's just this armature that... Uh, is holding the entire leg together. And from what I've seen in videos, it's very pliable plastic. Like you don't really have to worry about it getting uh, broken because of the wiggliness. But that wiggliness is still kind of alarming and I wish that this solidified itself a little bit better. They hold up well, they just do that wiggle that's a little alarming. And the other weird thing is the ab crunch on this one, which it does have ab crunch. Sometimes it clicks in place and I can't get it to move and other times it just unclicks and I have no idea. Okay, so it seems like... Okay. Is that how it works? Okay, <laughs> I just figured it out. So, to do the ab crunch thing, uh, when you push this in, you kind of want to push back and that will get things lined up so this doesn't move and then if you push forward a little bit, that allows you to unlock the ab crunch. And this is... A bit too loose for it to be useful because the torso is rather heavy. Like if you lean it forward too much, he'll just flop. But it's still cool that he has an app crunch. And I suppose since I'm getting some of these other features out of the way now, let's uh, open this up because this is a Prime, even if it's a Nemesis Prime. So of course he has a as I was saying, this is a Prime, so he does have a Matrix Chamber. And that little Matrix does not hold in securely. It just kind of flops right on out. There it is. Yay. So with all of that out of the way, jeez, does this look good. The shiny black is great. I like the gunmetal and silver bits. The areas that were detailed are great, because it's a lot of stuff on this that was not painted in the original Studio Series version. Like, what's going on in the forearms here, and there's some more detail on the legs. It looks really, really good. And the way that certain bits kind of swing around and swing up on the insides of the legs here to kind of clean up the truck mode and also fill out the robot mode legs are really surprisingly clever. 
like these bits on the inner thighs that flip up and the front panels that fold around. One thing to note with transforming this guy though, when you move these, you want to rotate these down like part way. You don't want to rotate them all the way around because if you rotate them all the way around and try to move these pieces, the uh, it's hard to see, but like the geometry of this will basically crash into this and it'll like press up against it and it doesn't feel good. So basically you just want to rotate this about 90 degrees and that'll give you the clearance you need to rotate this piece around and once it's rotated to about that point then you can rotate this up the rest of the way and it sits nice and flush. And if you try to rotate it up like this you'll see that it's pinching against this bit here so you want to rotate it down, flip this around, then finish rotating this up. Just something to be aware of if you get this guy and are transforming him. You want to kind of do things in a certain order to avoid parts crashing into other parts and possibly damaging each other. Looking at the details, there's some nice detail on the foot. Again, I wish these struts were maybe die cast or something, but maybe there is a reason for that, either budgetary or just construction wise. But there is some nice painted detail all throughout here, like in the toes and stuff right up there. Even the backs of the heels have this nice painted detail that like it's weird that you actually have to do some transformation on the feet, but it's a thing. I think it's kind of cool too how the backs of the calves have this little panel that it's easy to miss and it tucks in when you're going into truck mode. Like it just kind of sits down there to allow it to flip up into the inner thigh, but you can angle that out to reveal a little bit more detail. I think they're supposed to be like this. It's easy to accidentally push them in, but it's fine. And here's where you can see the uh, the need for the Cybertronian hubcap cover things, because the front wheels are tucked into his torso now, and you don't see them. So here you can do like the Cybertronian hubcaps and straighten out the smokestacks. Straighten out the smokestacks, as I was saying and that gives him more of like the Cybertronian look, but I'm fine with just doing the uh, the regular wheels. I also think it's really cool how the uh, gas canister, when it opens up, this kind of rotates around to fill out the gas canister, but then if you transform them, you rotate that around and that creates a more robotic looking back of the thigh. There's just so much cool stuff going on with this guy. And getting back to the details, I like the uh, silver bits that are picked out in the shin vents and also kind of right around the kneecap here and the teal in there, silver in there, and even the inner thigh. They painted some gold in the pistons there. It looks really, really good. The midsection is kind of this gunmetal-y, silvery color with little black bits on the sides and then some teal in there, which also looks great. The forearms, as I was mentioning, have some really nice gunmetal-y painted details in here. And now, there are a couple of versions of the original LS-13 that I've seen. The, one of the ones that I got had like this battle damage around the forearms for some weird reason, but nowhere else. The second one I got did not have the battle damage, and as you can see, this Nemesis version does not have the battle damage paint job either, and I'm fine with that. If they did a battle damage paint job, I'd be okay with it, but I would want it to be you know, across the board, not just on the forearms like it's some weird siege thing. The hands have a little bit of that teal on the backs of the palms, or backs of the hands. I like they painted the little Optimus Prime arrows in. And then up on the shoulders you get like the parts of the truck cab that are folded around. And for some reason you get these bits that are separate that can fold out, and I guess it's just if you want to. Maybe it ties into Cybertronian stuff that I'm just not remembering. Maybe it's just meant to look slightly more dynamic. If you wanted to, you could fold those out partially or fold them out all the way to give him weirdly shaped shoulders. And then these kind of pods on top of his shoulders are now in that teal color as well. And of course for the windows, you get that nice blood red color, which does look good in robot mode, but I feel like if they had gone with the metallic-y red, it would look just as good. So I don't know. On the back, he is quite clean and virtually kibble-free. I guess maybe the backs of the forearms. The back cleans up really nice. It's kind of the standard Studio Series back, except it tucks in better. 
And of course those wheels now tuck into the torso rather than sticking out of the sides. But they did some really nice paintwork here with like a mixture of like the black plastic and then some gunmetal, but then they also went in with silver in a few key places. And I really like that kind of silver on gunmetal color scheme that they went with back here. It looks really nice. Lastly, there is the head, and this is the alternate head that the figure comes with that has a little bit more molded detail on the faceplate and also longer ears. This is the original head that it comes with, and you can see that it's very similar, but it doesn't have quite as much molding on the faceplate, and the ears are a little bit shorter. But this is the head that it comes with, and it's really easy to swap on and off. There's just a ball joint on the plate there and a ball peg on the uh, bottom of the neck, so you just pop on, pop off. And the head looks great. I love how they did like the silver detailing around the various edges and on the ear bits there. They got the crest. Lots of really nice detailing molded in there and it's painted really well. It goes all the way around to the back. And then you've got those eyes that don't look super great like this because they're, you know, translucent red plastic, but there is the button on the back. Press that, and the eyes glow a very, very bright red. Like even back here, it's quite bright. The one issue that I have with this is I think there's a single LED kind of in the middle pointing forward, and because of that, it kind of makes it look like he has two pupils that are kind of crossing in the front. So it's a little silly, but then from angles it looks okay. There's that, and the uh, the other head also has the light-up gimmick. And also it was nice, these came with batteries. And there is his rifle, which is pretty much a typical ion blaster looking thing. And as you saw, it does transform slightly so that it can go into the back of the truck and act as like sort of a trailer hitch, I guess. But I like that it fills out the truck. And also this has a little button right here. And if you press that, you get a very bright LED coming out of the gun barrel problem that I have with this is if you look at the handle you can see that there's only a tab on one side of the grip which means he can only hold the gun in his right hand. It's not the worst thing it's just a little disappointing. Now this would be the point where I put the gun in his hand and then go over articulation but I'm gonna go over articulation first because the gun does not like to sit in his hand super snugly. So the head, the base of the neck is actually on a ball joint so you can turn, go up and down, and waggle back and forth a little bit. And then there's also a hinge where the neck meets the head, so you can look up and down with that a little bit. The arms can go around. They sit a little low, uh, the joint sits a little low, so it looks a little bit weird when they go forward like this, but it's workable. They go out a bit, but you can accordion uh, these bits up and out of the way to go out a little bit further. Another thing you can do is if you detransform him slightly and pull this joint out, which gives him a little bit of a butterfly, which is cool, but this joint is not super tight. But if you pull it out like that, then you can get a little bit more of a comfortable outward movement. And even with these pegged back in place, you can go out pretty decently. One thing that stinks though is because of the placement of these smokestacks, you can't have these panels go out when they're folded up like this, you have to open them up in order to have them go out like that. Which isn't great, but eh, it's fine. You also get a pretty much 90 degree bend on the elbow. There is bicep rotation. The forearm rotation that the Studio Series version usually has is there, but it's locked in place by this panel that's used as part of the transformation. But you can move that panel out of the way and then use that forearm rotation if you want. It does break up the sculpt though. You do also get wrist rotation. The thumb is on a ball joint so that can rotate and move around like ball joints do but then it also has two extra hinges in both the top and inner knuckle I guess. I don't know what you call that. And the fingers are a similar affair where each of them has three joints so they can bend in there bend in there, and they can bend in there. So you get quite a bit of posability in the hands. And they seem pretty darn sturdy too. This isn't like some KFC nonsense that's going to break apart if you just look at them funny. Still kind of mad about those hands I bought for my G2 Sideswipe that broke within like the first day. 
As I mentioned, there is also the ab crunch, which if you want to use it, kind of push forward, and that will allow you to crunch forward quite a ways. But again, it's kind of a loose joint. Also, because this does have the same hip limitations as the Studio Series in that they hinge forward towards the front, if you use that ab crunch, it makes it possible to bend the legs back more. So that is one way that you can put the ab crunch to good use. But yeah, the, uh, the legs can go forward quite a bit. You've got the hip skirts that you can use to go out and go not quite 90. Thigh rotation. And now because of the geometry of this whole area, uh, the legs will sit just fine, but the rotation you want to kind of be careful because of how all of this is shaped. So you kind of want to bring the legs out a bit if you're going to be rotating them. And then there is the knee bend, which these knees are so much better than the ones I had before. It's uh, a little bit better than 90. Not bad. I wonder if you'd get more if you rotate this out of the way and move the fuel canister out of the way. Will that get you more? Yes. So if you move some stuff out of the way, you can get a much deeper knee bend. Though now you've got things looking a little bit messy on the side here. And the feet go forwards and backwards and tilt left and right a little, well, a little bit of outside, but mostly inside just because of the construction. Also because of the construction, you can kind of sort of shift the foot back and forward a little bit. So that can kind of help with stability to a degree. So yeah, pretty poseable. All right, now let's give this guy his gun. So that just does the masterpiece style thing of slotting into the palm. There's a little slot in there and it just, it doesn't hold in super great. You also want to kind of curl the fingers a bit because it needs to go around that clip. Peg that in and then curl the fingers around it. And I find it's best to try and curl the fingers around as tight as you can because the, uh, the peg is acting as more of a guide. The fingers are really what's holding that gun in place. And there we go. There is Dark Knight with his rifle. But he doesn't just come with the rifle either. He also comes with this battle axe thing, which does light up very bright. And that's also cool. And that tabs into either hand because this grip actually has the, uh, the pegs on both sides of the grip. I do have one issue with the axe, though. And that is when he's holding it, I kind of feel like he's holding it too close to the blade. It just makes the axe feel tinier. I kind of wish that maybe the grip was down here so it would feel more like a proper hatchet. It's a cool robot axe. I feel like it should be bigger, you know? Make it a little bit more imposing and threatening. It's fine for what it is, but uh, I just wish it was a little bigger. Also, there's no place for that to store in vehicle mode. Anyway, size comparisons. I'm gonna need to pull this back a bit. Uh, here he is with the standard deluxe squad, and he's big. Here he is with basically Studio Series 38 Prime, so you can see just how much of a ridiculous upscaling they had going on here. And you can also see how different a lot of the design is. Like, the feet here are much more square. I mean, there's way more going on with the legs, but like, the proportions in the legs, the shape of the legs are very different. The torso less boxy. The chunks that are on the backs of the forearms are not there anymore. They're kind of moved up to the shoulders, but it bulks out the shoulders more. It's a lot of heavy re-engineering here. And here he is with the duck tank. And that is going to do it for the Aoi, Aoi, whatever mech LS-13B Dark Knight. It was quite the ordeal to finally get my hands on this thing, but I'm glad I finally did because he is very cool. I do wish that certain things were a little bit different, like those kind of armatures down in the legs and this bit of transformation. I just wish that was sturdier, but there are ways to work around it pretty easily. It's not that bad. And I like how you get a fair number of options with this without there being like a glut of accessories. It's something simple, like a couple of different head options, potential Cybertronian hubcaps. It gets the job done. And it's funny because as I've been messing around with this guy to do the comparisons, it just reminded me how solid the uh, Studio Series 38 mold is. So taking that and upgrading it and upsizing it is kind of a brilliant move, I guess. It's a great foundation that they built on here, and I really like the results. The original figure is very cool, but I adore it so much in the Nemesis colors. It's so nice. 
but that is going to do it for what I think. So, as always, feel free to let me know what you all think of this or any of the other studio series-ish, Bumblebee movie-ish, Optimus Primes that are out there. As I know there are a lot of options. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. As always, art is more than meets the eye, and next time? Well, I don't know. As of this recording, this is the last Nemesis Prime figure that I have in my collection, so I don't have any other Nemesis Primes to talk about. But also, as of this recording, the month of September is not over, so that may change. There may be more Nemesises, Nemesis, whatever, coming in the future, but as of this moment right now as I'm recording this, this is it for Nemesis September. So if this is in fact the last video for the month, thank you everybody for sticking with me through all this. Like I said, I just wanted to do something a little bit fun and silly for like a theme month idea. And if this is not the last video, then surprise! But either way, thank you again for watching, and I will see you all next month with more or less the usual stuff.